Hey, good morning, guys. It is Saturday yet again, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, just finished Capoeira class, so I thought I'd post another live video. So we'll see if anyone jumps up uh, and tunes in. Last week, I showed you the three glute medius exercises in progressing heart difficulty uh, that you can work on at home. No, uh, no equipment necessary, no resistance necessary except for your own body weight. Uh, so hopefully you guys tried those. They're awesome exercises, really, really important. I kind of wanted to follow through with that with some side plank options today. Side plank is a really, really great exercise and really underutilized in my opinion. Um, the frontal plane of your body, which means basically all the sides, is, is most often neglected in most people's fitness programs, whether you're a runner, a swimmer, a biker, you do yoga, things like that. Actually, yoga is probably one of the ones that's better. Good morning! Um, so the frontal plane is really, really important just for stable health. And by frontal plane, I mean the sides. So a lot of things, you're moving forward, you're moving backwards, you're moving up, you're moving down. The frontal plane is out here. So anything with your arms, like the glute medius we did with the legs, that's a frontal plane exercise. With your arms, it would be moving out to the sides here. And then your core frontal plane is side to side type movement. So frontal plane is really, really important for having comprehensive fitness, not having any kind of weak points in your structure. And specifically, Miles is here, if you guys want to say hi. Um, specifically, your obliques and your QL, which is the quadratus of lower in your lower back, is really, really important to strengthen for lower back health. So, one of the, um, if you know Dr. Stuart McGill, he is the lower back guru. He, if you have lower back problems, check him out. Um, one of his big three exercises is the side plank for that reason. So, I love side planks. I use them with all my clients all the time. And the only difficulty I will say that side planks sometimes have is you have to support your weight on one shoulder. So, if you have a real cranky shoulder, it's tricky. And I understand I've hurt my shoulder and I've had to skip them for a while. But anyway, let's get into it. I want to show you three varieties of side plank that you can do specifically to target the obliques. Okay? The first one, just a basic standard side plank. I'm going to go back to my mat. Hopefully you guys can see and hear me out, right? So, basic standard side plank. The whole idea is you want to make your body front to back as flat as a board. So I have my shoulders rolled back. I have my butt squeezed tight. I'm up and I'm flat. So my hips are not sticking back, my shoulders are not rounding forward, I've got a big chest, hips forward, everything flat. You also want to make sure you are straight as a rail, so I'm not up here, my hips aren't sagging to the ground, my knees aren't turned up. Notice I'm straight as a rail, head to toe. And this is an exercise we do for time, it's a static exercise, so all you're doing is holding it, counting off, use a stopwatch, use the second hand of your wristwatch, whatever, hold it for time. If that is too challenging, either on your side or on your shoulder, you can go ahead, bend your knees, and hold forward, just like we did on one of our exercises last week. So this is a, a regression to do if the first version is a little too hard. And again, you're doing that for time. This is a static exercise. So that's the first exercise. Make sure you do the same amount of time on both sides. A lot of people, they will have one side that's stronger than the other, or one shoulder that is more cranky than the other. Make sure you match both sides to whatever side is weaker. So if you can do 30 seconds on one side, 20 seconds on the other, do 20 on both to stay symmetrical. Because you don't want to work the stronger side harder and have it get even farther ahead, if that makes sense. Now, second movement, we can make this dynamic. Dynamic means rather than static, which is holding still, it's moving. So the way we do that is a side plank hip lift. So we're still flat as a board, straight as a rail. We're going to drop our hip to the ground, touch and then lift up as high as you can. Try not to rotate your body at all. Stay facing the wall or facing forward with your chest and just move sideways. And I like to do this one for reps. Say 10 to 15 repetitions per side, two to three sets. So just show me what that looks like. It's one, two, take your time, three, and make sure you stay strict with that form. Four, four, five, six, seven, and eight, I'll stop there because you probably have the idea. That's another one you can regress by bending the knees and doing it from your knees here. And it's a bit easier. So that's a way to take some pressure off. So like I said, you can hold it both statically, like the first one, you can do it dynamically, which is surprisingly challenging. You'll get tired, you'll feel your sides burning there. The third way, one of my favorite ways to work in side planks when we're doing any of these movements is by adding extra movements to it. So for example, last week, we did the side plank with the leg raise. We're still holding a side plank, but we're doing something else. And what that is doing is that's turning the side plank into an anti, 
rotation or anti-flexion movement. That means your abs are resisting bending, which is their job in everything else. When you lift a heavy weight, when you pick things up, your abs job is to stabilize you and keep you from bending. So that's really, really important. So, say for example, as with last week, when we're doing this side hip raise, my core is holding me up so I don't bend, just like on a static one. But when you add movement to it, it's working a lot harder. You can also do any number of exercises. One of my favorites, take a dumbbell and do a lateral raise. And you'll feel the weight's trying to pull you and twist you, just the momentum of moving that weight. And your core has to fight all that movement. So it's really tiring to do this from a side plank. Same thing, you can go from the hip and work the, lateral, the medial deltoid, like a shoulder raise. You can do rotator cuff work here, which I really like. If you have a cable machine or a band, you can hook it to a door jam in front of you and do rows, full rows. You can hook it to a door jam ahead of you and do lat pull downs, all while holding a side plank. And so, in so doing, your core, your lateral core specifically, has to work way, way harder to resist any kind of movement that your body wants to make because of the momentum of the weight and gravity pulling you down. So that's by far the most advanced variation of a side plank, is adding other movements to it. Uh, but it's my favorite, and I work in it with a lot of folks. And it's very efficient. If you're working your shoulders at the same time as your core, it's two for one in the same amount of time. Plus, it jacks your heart rate up, you get a little cardio too. So like I said, there's static side plank, there's dynamic where you're doing the side hip lift, and then there's anti-rotation, anti-flexion, where you're just doing other exercises while you happen to be holding a side plank, which is definitely the hardest you love it. So give those three a try. Just like anything else, I would do them at least once a week, preferably two or three times, and two to three sets. Go at your own pace, find your level. Don't hurt your back. We're trying to make our back stronger here, our core stronger. So good luck with that, guys. Leave some comments if you like the video. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next week. Bye.